Hi, my name is Aidan Finn from Cloud Mechanics, and in this video I'm going to explain how you can choose an Azure Virtual Machine series or size from the wide variety that Microsoft provides us with. I'm a Microsoft Value Prof Professional, or MVP, with dual, the dual expertise of Microsoft Azure and Cloud and Data Center Management. In my day job, I'm a technical sales lead with a technology distributor or wholesaler. My customers are Microsoft Partners, and we specialize in providing Microsoft Cloud Services through the Cloud Solution Provider or CSP program to those companies. My day job, well, my job is to learn Azure and teach Azure, and that will lead me to talking about Cloud Mechanics in a few minutes. I've been spending the last three and a half years teaching Microsoft Azure to partners at the sales and the technical level and running a lot of classes. And I also write about this stuff on my own site on aidenfin.com and I'm the contributing editor on Microsoft Virtualization for the Petri IT Knowledge Base at Petri.com. I mentioned that I've been delivering a lot of training and I've been getting a lot of feedback from people around Europe going, when are you going to bring that training to us? So myself and my wife got together and we founded a new company called Cloud Mechanics. And the goal of this is to bring my own custom written training to Europe. So the first class I'm going to be running is in London on February 22nd to 23rd. You can find out more about that on london.cloudmechanics.com. It's a two-day class. We'll be running in central London at the Lancaster Gate Hotel, which is close to three underground stations on three lines. And it's also within walking distance of Paddington Station. The cost of this class is £800 per person or £700 per person if you're booking two or more seats. It's a two-day class covering everything from the very beginning, so if you're new to Azure, this is a great place to get going. But if you're also experienced with Azure, I think you're going to learn an awful lot too. A lot of the people who've attended my training in the past few years have been working with Azure already, and they thought they knew Azure. And a few of them have come up to me afterwards and said, well, you know what, I thought I knew Azure, but turns out I really didn't, and I've learned a lot. So we'll be covering a lot of things from the very basics, getting through to advanced networking and looking at backup and disaster recovery, you know, how to best spec your virtual machines, get the best possible performance out of your storage. And we'll start looking at some cool things like JSON diagnostic and monitoring and alerting and securing that with artificial intelligence as well. So let's have a look at virtual machines. When we start looking at virtual machines, people, you know, they often get lost in the Azure world. They see so many variations and they just get blinded with all the options. And what I like to do is bring it back to something familiar, which is physical servers. If you talk to a techie or consultant, even a salesperson, you say, I want a file server, I want a domain controller, I want a virtualization host. They've got go-to series of machines from a particular vendor like HP or Dell, no Lenovo, Cisco, or whoever. And they, within those series, there are sizes. So if you say to someone, listen, I need a virtualization host, there's probably a two user that they go to, and then they figure out how much memory they need and how many cores they need. And it's not that different than Azure, to be honest. Within Azure, we have virtual machine series. So much like we would have a DL380 and a DL580 and all that from the likes of HPE or or Force 30 or, or 930 from Dell, we've got series from Azure. And each of these series is based on a particular set of traits on the physical hardware that is underneath the virtual machine. And the series are named after a letter. And those letters, actually mean something. They're, a, they're, they're an indicator of something about that virtual machine. And we'll talk more about that as we go through this deck. Within the series, there can be generations. So much like there's a DL380 Gen 8, and then a G9, and then a G10, in the D series of virtual machines from Azure, so that series called the D series, there's a D series, a DV2, and then a DV3, each one succeeding the other. And within each series, there are sizes. So if I was to go on to you know, the Dell site and have a look at the OR930, there's a good chance that I will see a bunch of different sizes for that particular series of physical host. And the same is true of Azure. There are also some specializations. So there are some special letters that indicate something about the virtual machine and its capabilities. So for example, if I see a virtual machine with the letter S, it means that it supports SSD. So that virtual machine can run SSD or HDD OS disks and data disks. And here's the cool thing. If I deploy a DS2 virtual machine instead of a D2 virtual machine, it's the same cost. What changes is 
the cost of the disk, which is not included in the cost of the virtual machine. So my OS disk and my data disk, I can choose to deploy them with HDD or SSD, but the cost of the virtual machine itself doesn't change. So some people would say, why would I ever deploy the D2? I'll deploy the DS2 and gives me the flexibility of changing my disks afterwards. You got the A2M V2, which has four times more memory than the A2 V2. M is for memory. Then the H16 OR, OR is for RDMA. That means that virtual machine has an additional NIC that's capable of remote direct memory access. It's a Mellanox NIC running at 40 or 56 gigabits per second. It's got low latency, low CPU impact, and very low jitter, and very high throughput. So let's have a look at some of the virtual machine series. The most common ones you're going to see are the A series, the D series, and the F series. And the A series, there's two of those really. There's the basic and the standard. But what they have in common is the processor is limited. It's actually artificially limited. It's simulating what used to be physically present in Azure, which was an, a low-spec Optron processor. And these virtual machines are kind of the low end. A is the starting point of the alphabet. So A is the starting point of your virtual machines. Low end, great for low end workloads. Maybe it's domain controllers, file servers, very small databases, like a gig or something. But you know, the cheapest of the virtual machines typically that you're gonna use. Now the basic A series is actually crippled because some of the Azure features aren't available to it. Microsoft define it or describe it as being a test dev machine. Realistically, if you need test dev, you probably need something very similar to what your production workload will be. But I do have uses for the basic A series from time to time. It can be a good jump box or a bastion host, but also it can be good for something like a domain controller where I don't necessarily need all that much power, especially in the small medium enterprise world. The standard A series, not bad for file servers, um, low-end database servers, but really just an entry point. Pretty quickly, you're going to find yourself looking at the D series and the F series. D is for disk. D is also for database. The D series is good at disk activity. So if you're after IOPS, if you're after throughput, the D series might be the machine for you. And it's also the first of the machines, and the rest of the machines are true of this too. It's based on the Xeon processor. Then the cousin of the D is the F, the F series. I think of the Ford pickup truck. Good horsepower, good all-rounder. I'm capable of doing lots of things. Very often, if you're running an application server and the standard A is not quite up to it, the F series is gonna be your choice. So this is a good line of business application server, good web server if you need a lot of traffic. And some notes on those. Well, we have a standard AV2. So the A series was replaced by the AV2, and the AV2 is actually cheaper than the A series. We have a DV2, which was released and is now cheaper and faster than the D series. And then Microsoft released a DV3 to replace the DV2. There's an interesting thing about that, because the DV3 isn't actually faster than the DV2, although it is cheaper. The D series is typically aimed at database workloads, and database workloads aren't necessarily all about the gigahertz, they're about the thread count. So most of the time when I've had performance alerts from database workloads, it's because there haven't been enough threads available to run tasks. Databases are multi-threaded and they need more threads or cores to be faster. They don't need more gigahertz. So Microsoft released a DB3 series on a host that has Intel hyper-threading enabled, giving us double the number of threads. Now that means that each virtual processor on a virtual machine is basically taking one thread or half a core. And the, they went with a higher spec processor, but the result was each virtual processor was 28% less powerful than the DV2 series equivalent. So Microsoft made the DV3 28% cheaper than its predecessor. Now we don't mind that it's 28% less powerful because we've got more threads, which means our database actually performed better but a lower cost, so that's a win-win. The DV3 at the moment is in limited regions, but it is making its way around the world. And the FS V2 replaced the F series. Now this is faster and cheaper than the older F series, which we love. Um, but the, the interesting thing here is, it's only available as an S variant. So this is Microsoft probably recognizing that, you know, why would I deploy an F when I can deploy the FS? at the same cost, and it gives me the choice of doing HDD or SSD. And right now, the FS V2, it's very new at the time of recording this video, so it's only in a few regions. Before we move forward, we should talk about the temp drive. 
And temp drive is a non-persistent place to store data on disk. And it's actually stored on the host itself, not on the back end highly available storage where OS disks and data disks are stored. Do not store any data on the temp drive. This is a free disk and a lot of people will be tempted to put data on here, but if your virtual machine is rebooted or it's moved to a different host, that temp drive will be gone. It'll have a different temp drive. Microsoft views this because it's low latency, it's on the local host, they use it for the swap file or the paging file, depending on your operating system. And SQL Server has a configuration where you can move the tempdb database onto this ephemeral drive. So you have better performance of tempdb. Now the thing, the reason I'm mentioning this is the basic A series and the standard A series place their temp drive on local HDD storage on the host. Every other virtual machine series, so from the D series on up, use SSD temp drive, meaning that that paging file is very fast, that swap drive is very fast, and if you move tempdb there, it can be very fast too. Before we move on from the common virtual machines, let's talk about burstable workloads. Very often our applications are only used once in a while, so our processor utilization might be sitting at 2-3%, then maybe once a week or once a month someone uses an application and the processor bursts. Well, Microsoft have a series of virtual machines designed for that type of workload called the B-Series. The B-Series is based on hosts with Xeon processors, but it limits the processor potential of each of the virtual processors. So the lowest spec one, for example, limits the virtual processors to 10% of the underlying core's potential. Now, while the virtual machine is sitting there under that 10% and nobody's using it, the virtual machine earns credits. And those credits can later be burned to burst beyond that 10% limitation, or whatever the limitation is for the size of the B-Series virtual machine that you deployed. Now this makes this virtual machine way cheaper than the A-Series, the D-Series, or even the F-Series. Now the question is, what virtual machines will I deploy as B-Series? Will I take a chance up front? Probably not. However, what you can do is you can use the metrics of your virtual machines through Azure Monitor to identify which virtual machines will be candidates to convert from a D or an F or even an A back to a B series and save a lot of money. So you'll spec originally for something that's definitely going to be capable of the task, but then when you identify the processor usage, it can bring it back to this B series and save a lot of budget. Microsoft does have some virtual machines with some specialized hardware. So for example, there are virtual machines cap capable of running on hosts that have NVIDIA chipsets. And those virtual machines don't use virtualization to connect to the NVIDIA chipsets. They use something called DDA, or Discrete Device Assignment, which is a Hyper-V 2016 feature, which allows the virtual machine to connect directly to the CUDA cores of the GPU. And there are three families or series of virtual machines within this uh, space. With the NV series, V is for virtualization. And this is where you want to run something like ORDS or Citrix to do application or session virtualization. All of these hosts run on Xeon processors, and so they're all pretty powerful machines. With the NC series, C is for compute. So if you want to do simulations, if you want to do number crunching, if you want to do something in the oil or pharma business, the NC series. NC series is probably the machine you're looking at. But if you're into neural nets, well, ND might be for you. D is for deep learning. So if you want to do artificial intelligence, if you want to process neural nets on dedicated chipsets, these are the machines for you. There have been different generations of these machines, and you can see all the different chipsets that are available here on this slide. And um, what's interesting is the rate of pace that we're seeing, the improvements that's going on. NVIDIA will tell you that you know, gaming is great for them, it's a big cash cow, but this is their growth area. This is where they're seeing their profits increase. And we can see that with the rate of improvement on the NC series. At the moment we have an NC series, but in December 2017 there's going to be an NC V2 series going generally available. At the same time, an NC V3 series is in preview. And the ND series is going generally available in December 2017 as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if not long afterwards we see newer generations of these machines. NVIDIA are producing faster and faster processors because of the demands of industry and the competition. If you need big workloads, Azure can support those too. So we have the E series. E is for extra. And this is the DV3 series virtual machines, but with more RAM. 
So if you need larger databases that need more RAM to cache those databases in RAM or to do enough big queries, the E-Series might be for you. What if you want to do high-performance computing? That's the H-Series. H is for high performance. If you need to do big clusters of high-performance computing with RDMA NICs, well, that's the series of virtual machines for you in Azure. And then we have what we used to be the biggest virtual machine in the cloud, the G-Series. G is for Goliath, or Godzilla, if you're like me. This is a virtual machine that was capable of having lots of RAM, up to 448 gigs of RAM, and lots of data disks. So if you wanted huge databases, G was for you. But then the along came the M series. M is for massive or monstrous. Up to 128 cores and two terabytes of RAM. That's a seriously big virtual machine with a seriously big bill. But there are customers out there who asked for it. There's also some specializations in these large virtual machines. So a cousin of the G-Series is the LS-Series. The LS-Series runs on the same hardware as the G-Series, but instead of storing its disks on the back-end shared storage, much like all the other virtual machines do, it stores all of its disks on the host's local flash storage. Now this means it has much lower latency for data access and for doing queries, etc. And Microsoft recommend this for you know specialized NoSQL workloads that need this level of performance. The LS series is restricted to oh, only a few regions. Typically, where you're going to find the G series, um, it's a a rare machine that you're not going to see very often. So how do I choose my machine? Well, we start off the way we always started off. Well, we have to understand our application, and that's going to determine how many processors and cores we need, how much RAM we need. Ideally, we'll know how many IOPS we need. That can be very difficult. What's easier to figure out is capacity. IOPS is one of these things that, you know, very often we need to look at empirical data if we have it, or maybe do some test and dev to try to understand what sort of demand we're gonna need on the disk performance. Also networking. So the higher up the chain you go, the higher the uh, networking performance of your virtual machines. Then we pick the series. If we understand the traits of the workload, okay, it's low end, maybe I'll put it on an A series. You know, it's gonna be a pretty grunty database server, but it's not crazy amounts of RAM. I'll go with the D series. You know, it's a pretty big database server and I'm gonna need a lot of RAM, maybe a couple of hundred gigs. Well, I'll have a look at the G series. And then I find the size. So if I know how many cores I need and how much RAM I need, I can go to the series specs and I'll scroll down and find the size that meets the minimum requirements of my virtual machine, or the recommended requirements, ideally. And that's it. It's that easy. There's not much more to it, to be quite honest. Now, if you want to get the exact specs of all the machines, and the exact uh, versions of processors, the models, the speeds, etc., you can find all that information online. Do a search for Azure VM sizes, and the first non-adverse result that you find on your search engine is the page to go to. When you go to that page, Microsoft will break it down into things like general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, storage optimized, GPU, and high performance compute. That's how Microsoft like to break them down. I break them down slightly differently, but that's how Microsoft does it. And you'll be able to see all the very detailed information that Microsoft shares. So, quick reminder, if you're interested in learning stuff like this, but with lots more information, have a look at london.cloudmechanics.com where you'll find my new bespoke training course that we're going to be running in London on February 22nd and 23rd of 2018. Two days, starting at the very basics, and working way through all the, through the good stuff, lots of best practices, how to maximize performance, get the best possible security, make it as manageable as possible. £800 per person, or £700 if you register two or more seats. So hopefully, we'll see you there. So I've been Aiden Finn, thank you for tuning in, and make sure you check out www.aidenfinn.com. Bye.